recording process. Well, welcome everyone uh, to this town hall uh, on navigating the healthcare system. Uh, rules change, uh, timing uh, of access is going on right now, and we thought it would be great to share this with the community we serve and others that we're interested in. Tonight we have Jerry McMillan, who is uh, has had the McMillan Agency for many years, and he can talk more about that, but uh, he's also head of the Health Committee for the uh, NAACP has worked with the uh, mayor's office and others, uh, works a lot with uh, JTA, helping uh, senior citizens get access uh, to transportation, among the many other things that he's done over the years. And uh, we appreciate his uh, the work he does in the community. <clears throat> but tonight, we are going to appreciate his knowledge of the healthcare system and help us navigate and help us be in a position where we can help others uh, access, if anything, just to give them a link and uh, get them focused on it because the timing is a good one. So Jerry, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thanks a lot and welcome to everyone. I'm going to share my screen now. Okay, you see access to healthcare? Okay, um, what you see on the screen is basically the back of our business card. It's by way of introduction. Uh, Macmillan Agency um, is very much focused on uh, health insurance and, and health and well being. Uh, our motto is we keep you healthy, wealthy, and wise. And we'll say more about that later, but let's get right into the content. Um, access to health care, that's all about insurance. And it's a reality that if you go to the emergency room without insurance, that they're going to patch you up and send you home to die. If you go to the emergency room with an insurance card, you'll be there a couple of days, get every test and on demand. So what we need to do is to make sure that we have adequate access. And the other thing is moving our population, the underserved population, from critical and chronic care in the emergency room to preventive care. And everyone wins there because if you exercise preventive care, you're less likely to experience the chronic care issues otherwise experienced. And it costs you less, it costs the healthcare system less, and everyone is better off. The idea, central idea around insurance is spreading the risk of exposure or loss across a large pool. And to, to give you an example, if uh, an incident costs $100 and I have an incident, I'm out $100. But if a pool of people experience that one incident together, it's out $100, but you're out only a dollar a piece. And so few people will experience those events. And that's why the pooling of risk works. You're spreading it out and you know that everyone isn't going to experience it, but those who do don't face catastrophe as a result of it. And so we're limiting our individual financial risk because number one cause of bankruptcy is health bills. And so we want to get out in front of that. And so this is all about access to the care that we need to keep us from being very sick. And I frequently ask, uh, you know, how many people know someone who has to go to work when they're sick, whether they should or not? So you go to work sick and you make everybody else sick and you make yourself sicker. So we want to turn that around for the underserved population. And when you talk about the whole insurance question and what are the questions I should ask? We really want to know where will this cost me? Where will my healthcare experience cost me? And 
these are the questions. How much does it cost me to go see my primary care physician? How much will it cost me for a specialist visit? How much will my prescriptions cost? What will it cost me for an emergency room visit? What will it cost me for a hospital stay? And what would it cost me for an outpatient procedure? If you have the answers to these questions, you probably have a pretty good handle on what it will cost you for your health experience for the year. And some of the areas that as you look at a health plan, um, many of the ones that we see, your real financial exposure is going to the hospital. Uh, that's what can break you. Even with, and I may be getting a little ahead of myself here, even with some of the affordable care plans, you really need to drill down and find out because some of them have uh, a thousand dollar deductible to go to the emergency room. Some of them have a $2,500 deductible to go to the emergency room. Some of them have $2,500 a day deductible in the hospital. So you can see that could very quickly get to um, a large number and hit your maximum out of pocket exposure. And most people who are seeking affordable care really cannot afford those exposures. So um, you don't want to just have somebody sign you up. You really want to know what the answers to these questions are before you choose a plan. Now, we talk about access to health care, uh, two broad segments, the under 65, which the affordable care, affectionately referred to as Obamacare, and for people who are working without access to care, group care, or other care. And 65 plus, which is when you're eligible for Medicare, or if you've been on disability for two years or more, you can apply for Medicare. And of course, with end-stage renal, you can also apply for Medicare. And that's about a million dollar deal every hit. Footnote, Medicaid, a lot of people get those two con uh, confused. They are not interchangeable. As you see here, Medicare is for 65 and above, and Medicaid is for lower income and seniors with lower income. Pretty much to get Medicaid, your income needs to be below $1,100 a month for full Medicaid. Uh, there are some parcels at about twelve, thirteen hundred dollars a month, and if you make over sixteen hundred dollars a month, you're not likely to be eligible for any level of Medicaid. Uh, Florida Kid Care is provided for minors, um, again low income, and they can have health care to keep our children healthy. Um, there are a limited number, so when it runs out, it runs out. Um, funded by the state, primarily at the, well, the whole Medicaid is 90, about 94, 95% funded by the federal government and the state funds the rest. And so you ask the question, why would a state be turning down Medicaid expansion when 95% of it is going to be paid by the federal government if it's going to keep our people healthy? Um, that's a question that uh, you have to ask for your politicians and political people, but those are the numbers. Delve a little more into Medicare specifically. Uh, there's Part A and Part B. Part A pays for hospital expenses. Part B pays for doctor and outpatient expenses. Understand two things specifically here. M Medicare pays 80%. And so we have to figure out what we're going to do to cover that other 20%, which could be an enormous number, uh, depending on what happens. The other thing is that most people don't pay for Part A. I don't like to use the word free, but there's no monthly premium for Part A. For Part B, in 2024, it'll be $170 a month. If you are below certain income levels, you can 
have that $170 a month waived for that Part B. And you can see the, you get a red, white, and blue card that looks like the one on the right. If you're already receiving Social Security, you'll automatically be signed up for Medicare. If you're still working, you don't have to sign up and pay for the Part B when you get 65, as long as you have what we call uh, other creditable coverage. So if you're over 65 and you're still on a group plan, you don't have to sign up to pay that $170. I worked with some people recently, they had been paying that $170 for decades when they didn't need to. Um, so, you know, uh, but if you don't sign up for Part B when you're eligible, you're not required to. You can say, I don't want it. Some people do say, I can't afford that $170 a month. When you do go to add the Part B, you're going to pay a higher premium to the tune of 1%, an incremental 1% for every month you didn't have it when you were eligible. Unless you had other creditable coverage, then you do not have to get that Part B until that coverage runs out, you retire, or you're no longer covered. You may be covered under a spouse's plan. As long as you have other coverage, you're not required to take the Part B and pay for it. So we said Medicare pays 80%. So you take care of the other 20%. You basically have two options. You have a Medicare supplement, otherwise referred to as Medigap. People use those interchangeably. And you pay a monthly premium for that, roughly in the $200 a month range, depending on which level of plan you get. And when you get it, you have six months from the time you turn 65 and become eligible for Medicare or when you leave your other credible service, you have six months to where you can acquire a Medicare supplement policy guaranteed issue without underwriting. Outside of that window, it's underwritten based on your age and your health. You also need a prescription drug plan, which as you see here is part D, as in David. That is another out-of-pocket expense for a monthly premium, depending on, uh, it could be anywhere from $40, $50 a month to $100, $150 a month, depending on your needs and the drugs you use. So you can see it can be uh, rather expensive to age into America. You've got the $170 for the part B, You've got a couple hundred dollars for the Medicare supplement, and let's call it another hundred dollars for uh, the Part D. You know, you're over five hundred dollars a month per person in the household over 65. The nice thing about the Medicare supplement is that it's I think of it as a pay in advance, and you go in and you're covered, and they pay the other 20%. The other option for the 75% of the population or 70% of the population who cannot afford those kinds of expenses, we have a Medicare Advantage plan. And a Medicare Advantage plan is administered through private insurance companies like United Healthcare, Humana, WellCare, and others. And they it acts really a lot like your group insurance that you have at work. So you'll have co-pays for just about everything. Uh, typically, your um, primary care physician co-pay will be anywhere from zero to twenty, thirty dollars. Uh, specialist co-pay can be anywhere from ten to fifty dollars or so, and you have co-pays for every item, but you don't have that upfront expense for the MedSup and the prescription drug plan. Most of the Medicare Advantage plans include the prescription drugs, and they usually include some other benefits, ancillary benefits like the gym membership, basic dental, basic vision, basic hearing. Um, and so um, over two thirds of the people turning 65 are in the Medicare Advantage column, okay? Um, and a little more uh, visual, um, what, what I was just talking about, the um, 
So the first column is the Medicare Advantage. The second column is the Medicare Supplement, which you pay for. Most of the Medicare Advantage uh, policies, especially in the state of Florida, have a zero premium. There are exceptions, and it varies county by county. Each county's plans are different. There are some statewide plans. And depending on the market, uh, for instance, in South Florida, the plans are heavier on benefits than they are in North Florida, and Florida is heavier on the benefits than just about any other state. The, they both, everything helps pay for your hospital bill. I'll start from the right. Again, with original Medicare, it's going to pay for 80%. If you had a med, med sub, it's going to pay the other 20%. If you have a Medicare Advantage, it's going to pay everything except for your copay. Medical bills like doctor bills, it works the exact same way. Medicare pays 80, MedSimp will pay the other 20. And if you have a Medicare Advantage, you'll have a copay when you go see your doctor. Preventive care is usually a zero copay, and you'll have a copay for your primary, you'll have a copay for specialists. Preventive care. Preventive care is usually zero cost. Your checkups, your immunizations, they're usually zero cost. Prescription drugs, again, original Medicare doesn't cover your prescription drugs. You need a Part D prescription drug plan. If you have a Medicare supplement, Medigap, it doesn't include prescription drugs. You have to buy a Part D prescription drug plan. In most Medicare Advantage plans, it's going to include the prescription drug as a part of it. There are exceptions, so you really have to take a look at what you're getting. Um, most of the exceptions that don't pay for prescription drugs are focused on veterans because veterans can go to VA and get their prescriptions. So you know, they'll throw in some other benefits. And so you'll see some plans that don't have the prescription drugs, but they'll be a little richer in some other uh, so veterans do have that benefit. That And veterans, um, I didn't mention earlier, there is a late enrollment penalty for both Part B for your doctor and outpatients and for Part D, your prescription drugs. If you do not enroll when you're first eligible, then you will have a late enrollment penalty, which is an incremental monthly fee for the rest of the time you live and use the plans. So um, that's something you want to be aware of. And um, routine vision, uh, many, uh, most of the Medicare Advantage plans will include exams and some allowance for glasses with Medicap, Medigap, Medicare supplement, it varies by plan. Uh, um, they are adding more to those uh, supplemental benefits with some of the Medicare supplement plans. Uh, routine hearing exam, um, you can see usually uh, the Medicare Advantage is going to include uh, the basic exams and some allowance for hearing aid. Same thing with dental, basic uh, cleaning fluorides and exams um, are included. And so you can see the landscape. Um, most people just can't afford the middle column. And that's just a reality of life. Obamacare. What is Obamacare? Affordable Care Act. Um, the Obama administration was the first to actually make it happen. Then it was been attempted several, several times. What distinguishes the Affordable Care Act is it institutes a tax credit that helps you pay for your insurance premiums. The combination of your age, income, size of household, and how many people are being insured determines the amount of your tax credit. And that tax credit then perhaps pays your, your premiums. If your credit or subsidy is greater than the amount of the insurance premium, then your monthly premium will be zero. Now you have to have a minimum income, um, which 
uh, right now it's 14,400 a year, uh, which is the poverty level for a single person. You need to be at that level of income to enter. However, there are a few nuances such as if you're self-employed, you and and you must file a tax return uh, if you're receiving uh, Obamacare affordable care. But that can also include your income can also include help from family members. I work with students who are getting money from parents and family every month. That is also a part of the calculation of your income for getting you over that initial uh, $14,000 hump. So um, that's, and we'll move to what are the requirements? You need, must live in the United States, a citizen, U.S. national, or lawfully present in the U.S. You don't have to be a citizen in order to uh, acquire affordable care. You can't be incarcerated and you can't be covered by Medicare or eligible for Medicare. If you're over 65, they're going to default you over to the Medicare discussion. Um, the expansion of Obamacare. Um, these numbers are a little higher. This is the 2022 chart. Um, this number is now 14.4. Um, and so if you are within 150% of the poverty level, then you are likely going to, to receive a subsidy. And I'm gonna show you all that uh, in a little demonstration here toward the end. Other ancillary products you wanna look at in terms of your care. Um, again, um, additional dental. If your core plan has dental coverage, some basic dental coverage and you need more, you can acquire a standalone dental plan that you can stack when you exhaust all the benefits of your primary plan, then you can use the, uh, the dental benefits of the other plan. Um, that is perfectly legal and correct. Uh, there are some companies, United Healthcare and Humana are fairly aggressively this year marketing a standalone dental vision hearing plan that uh, and some of them go up to like $5,000 worth of benefits. Usually what's built into your core plan will give you $1,000, $1,500 worth of dental. They'll give you your vision basics and an allotment for, for glasses. The, the thing that I talk to most people about is the medical indemnity or hospital indemnity. You all have heard the duck commercials where um, if you have an, an experience, then uh, they pay the money directly to you. Some of the plan, as we've discussed, has some exposure with the hospital, and that's a way of limiting some of that risk. Um, for an individual, you're probably going to pay $40, $50 a month, depending on your age, um, for a plan that helps you cover some of your exposure if you go into the hospital. Um, and again, as, uh, especially with affordable care plans, be careful with a bronze plan. If, when you drill down and look at your exposure, to going into the hospital, it can be really scary. So you really wanna drill down and take a look at those. The, the cancer is a, everyone knows it's an issue. I saw some numbers that says half of women, third, I, I don't wanna misquote them, but a lot of us will experience cancer in our lifetimes. One of the things that you also wanna be aware of is if you are on a Medicare Advantage plan and you look at the details, you're on the hook for 20% of the cost of chemotherapy. I think it's a travesty. Write your congressperson and tell them we need to change that. Who can afford that? But you really want to look at that exposure and what you will do in the event of that occurrence. There are critical illness plans that pay you if you have a heart attack or a series of other serious illnesses. And there are also accident plans if you've got the active children. Um, yeah, my kids played soccer and we we're sitting in the in the stands and watching people's arms get broken. It's like it's a really scary kind of makes you make want to have some accident coverage. But those are other ways of covering your risks in terms of healthcare exposure. Okay. That's the the real summary of what I wanted to talk about. I'm gonna show you a couple things here. Um that's our contact, our website. The QR code takes you to our website. 
And if you go to our website, you're going to see there's a pop-up that pops up with uh, the 2023 Medicare Survival Guide. That's actually our, pop, our, our publication. If you're over 65, you've received a Medicare book, a thick book that nobody's ever read, and it's always a paperweight or in the trash. This is an interactive guide that covers all that information, but you have click-throughs, and you can go to the site and download it, and you can do it on your phone, and you can be at the doctor's office, you can be anywhere, and you can click through and call whomever you need to call and get the information and, and references. So you may want to take a look at that. Um, then as we scroll down, a couple of things I wanted to show you. There's a video here that's about 10 minutes that goes a little slower through the things that I talked about in about Medicare and in a little more detail, okay? Um, and there's a, a link where you can click to say look at plans in your area and you can put in some basic information and I'm gonna give you a demonstration here, three, two, two, four, four. Duval County. And view plans. And you can look at plans in your area, Medicare Advantage, prescription drugs, Medicare supplements. And you can go and you can drill down into uh, and do your analysis of the various plans that are available. You can actually self-enroll. So if you want to do your homework, you don't want to listen to somebody like me explaining stuff, you know, if you're a do-it-yourselfer, which I tend to be, then you can go ahead and you can, you know, you can go to your heart's content and drill down and look at all the details on whatever plan you want to. The other thing that I'll show you is that you can also, and I'm going to show you uh, the, if you know someone who is of the age for affordable care, um, one of the things about healthcare.gov, and I'm very thankful that we have healthcare.gov because before that we had nothing. Um, it's not the most user-friendly system in the world, and you have to put in a lot of information before you get any answers as to what you're eligible for or not eligible for. Here is a much easier, I'm going to put in the same zip code. OK, and you don't even have to put in your name, phone number, any of that to go see, you know, you don't have to ever give a pint of blood or any. You just go and we're in Duval. Continue. Um, I'm going to lie about my age. I'm going to say I'm 44. You can look at me and tell I'm not 44. And I'm going to say I don't have a spouse, don't have children. I won't enter any of that. And if I enter my income and I'll say my income is twenty five thousand and click continue and voila you're eligible for a 464 dollar a month subsidy a tax credit that's used to reduce the cost of your monthly insurance premiums and you want to see what you're eligible for uh, we'll skip putting in the names of the doctors and skip putting in the names of the prescriptions normally we would do that because when we look at a plan, we we'll want to see what's going to be the cost of my prescription drugs and is my doctor in network. And there you can see the array. Um, I've got them sorted by lowest premium. And you want to look at your premium. You want to look at your deductible, which is what the insurance company pay, what, what you are on the line for before the insurance company starts to pay. Although if there is a stated amount for a doctor's visit, specialist generic drugs, then that's not subject to the deductible. Uh, um, any specific copay amount is not subject to the deductible. That's just what you pay when you go to get service. All preventive care should be zero cost when you go to get your checkups, you go to get your immunizations and such. Now you can scroll down. As you can see, there are 135 plans and as usual, the devil is in the details. And I usually like to sort them by the lowest deductible because of the trade-off between usually what you pay up front. Now here, based on the income and the age, you know you can get a zero deductible, which I like zero deductible and a very low maximum out of pocket. The maximum out of pocket is the most you are going to pay in a given year, okay? And so you can scroll down and each one of these plans, again, um, is gonna have its strengths and weaknesses. And I'm gonna show you something which um, is really important as you look at the plan, 
and you're looking at the these numbers, the premiums, you're looking at the deductible, you're looking at the maximum out of pocket, you're looking at their star rating. Um, you can click and get the summary of benefit, which is a more detailed documents about the coverage. And you can scroll down and you confirm that before and after deductible, what it costs me to go to the doctor, specialist, and preventive care. As we said, preventive care is no charge. What my prescriptions are going to cost me, generic, brand, and non-preferred, you know, because, and that's why we want to enter your prescription drugs, because you won't have any guesswork. Um, I'll, do, I'll kind of demonstrate that as we, um, and you want to know what's it going to cost you when you go have, when, when there's, you know, blood work, $20, that's a good number. See, uh, MRIs about four or $500, you know, x-rays. So you want to, we, we have to look and see if we can find the best combination of predictable and limited costs for when the rubber hits the road. Cause right here is when the rubber starts hitting the road. Everything is, is 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 cheap when nothing happens. It's when something happens that you 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 get a gasp. Emergency room fifty percent. Well, this is a zero deductible, right? So um, the, the before deductible column doesn't even count. Um, you the emergency room fifty percent. You go to the emergency room, you could have a two thousand twenty two hundred dollar bill, so you're on the hook for a thousand eleven hundred dollars. And you won't find plans that give you a low exposure for the emergency room because they want to drive people out of the emergency room to urgent care and to preventive care in their primary care office setting. Emergency room care is extremely expensive and too many people use that as their primary care physician, which is why having these plans available is so important. So this is where your exposure is. And that's where you want it. You don't want to just look at these cute little top line numbers. Oh man, that's cheap. Give it to me. Drill down <clears throat> and look at what it's going to cost when there is an occurrence. Because you don't want a surprise at this point when you get home from the emergency room visit because you got high blood pressure and you got an $1,100 bill sitting in your mailbox. Outpatient services, psychological hospital stays, well baby, labor and delivery, and all these preventives are, should be no charge, okay? So what I wanted to um, take have you take a look at here is when you look at the details, when you click on that summary of benefits, then it's going to, then you'll see more detail about what it will cost you if you have a diagnostic test or x-ray. $20 copay for laboratory and professional. 50% for x-ray and di diagnostics. So, um, and if you go down further, it's going to tell you what things are explicitly not covered. Okay, so if you if you're looking for something like this plan specifically, no dental care for children. Now, the other thing is that I'm gonna flip back to here. You'll see some plans that will cover. You'll see some plans that will have like this one. It has vision and adult dental usually means about a thousand dollars worth of dental benefits and allowance for exams and glasses and you know these are you know pretty reasonable costs but we still want to look at the devil's details okay here's where we want to keep digging and looking and you know did you take some times unfortunately they don't give us the capability to say just give me the ones that have this this and this they make us work for it so um, as we're looking, those are the things that we want to look for as we drill down and look at plans. And, you know, you sometimes you think that, OK, here's a Florida blue plan. That's going to be a great one. Well, let us take a gander and see. OK, you got pretty good numbers for your primary care and specialist visits. Uh, your brand drugs and your generic first two tiers of drugs are pretty normal. X-rays, you've got stated amount, but here we go again, okay? We've got these exposures for the expensive stuff. Now, I happen to have a problem with that, and as you can see, too many of these plans have exposure when you get to the stuff that costs money, um, and so 
write your congressperson and let them know we, we, we've made some progress, but we're not there yet. So I want to do, uh, you know, show you where you could, the source where you can quickly go look for yourself, get some information. You can always, you know, call me, uh, call another professional and uh, get the help that you need and the guidance that you need in navigating this minefield that is access to healthcare coverage. Dennis, I'll turn it back to you. If there are any questions, we can entertain them. Thank you, Jerry. That was really helpful. Um, I learned a lot, and uh, but it sounds like there's a lot more there too. Um, so let's open it up to questions. Any questions from anyone on the uh, topic of access to Obamacare, Medicaid, anything like that? Jerry's the person to answer. So I'll uh, ask my question again to you, Jerry, that I asked before we started, uh, and that is, if somebody is turning uh, 26 mm -hmm. and not going to be on their family policy, when should they be thinking about en enrolling into uh, Obamacare? Within 60 days before you turn before they turn 26 so that the first of the month that they turn 26 they will their plan will be effective that way you won't have a gap in coverage and even before then you can just do what we just did go in and put in the age and the income to get an idea of what's out there what's available you can do that at any point there are right now we are in open enrollment which goes from november 1st through january 15th for your coverage to be effective January 1st, you must be enrolled by December 15th. Otherwise, you'll be effective February 1st. That's open enrollment, but there are life events that open up what we call a special enrollment period. Um, aging out, turning 26, that's an event that allows you to enroll at the time of the event versus waiting for open enrollment. Marriage death of a family member, death of a spouse, those events, life-changing events, trigger an enrollment opportunity based on that event. And you have 63 days to execute on that when there is a loss of coverage. That's another event. If you're laid off or for whatever reason you lose coverage, then you, that opens up an enrollment period. One other thing that I should have mentioned is that for if you, if your coverage at work is what we call a high cost plan, specifically more than 10% of your income, then you can opt out of the employer coverage and go into the affordable care coverage and seek less expensive coverage. So you want to compare those if your plan is more than 10% of your income. Thank you. That's helpful. Uh, you were talking about um, the expenses of, uh, you know, hospital care uh, and how some of these uh, policies uh, have, you know, significant percentages uh, required to be paid by the um, the person insured. And are there some that is it just um, way too expensive to even think that you could find somebody that would be more reasonable, uh, some firm that would be more reasonable on those well, costs? What, what happens is that you've got levels of plans. You've got bronze, extended bronze, silver, and gold. As you go to through the metals, they become a little more expensive, but their, their coverage is more robust. So depending on one's budget and how well things are explained up front, for instance, I talked to someone today and she looked at the lower cost plans and we looked at the details and she said, well, I can, I can, I can go $100, $150 to get rid of some of that exposure. So 
the lower level bronze plans like we just looked at is where you have the, some of those exposures. When you get the silver plans, you're paying a little more and get to the gold plans, you're paying a little more. Uh, my experience is that silver ends up being the sweet spot in most cases. Sometimes you look at the gold and you say, so what's so gold about this? It's no better than the silver plan. Why would I pay more for coverage that's exactly the same? And that's why we have to take the time to drill down and look at individual ones and not be in a hurry um, and shop for what is the best combination of factors to eliminate your financial risk. And what's the, um, just, you know, all uh, kind of like uh, transparency, what's what's in it for you? And um, I, I know you as a person and great character and, and, uh, and would not hesitate to send somebody to you, but what, what can we do to encourage people to go to agencies like yours, um, including, you know, they're, you're probably not going to charge them directly, are you? Uh, no, <laughs> I, I, I like having my freedom. Um, yeah. We're not allowed to charge you directly. Um, okay. we, <laughs> we're paid by the insurance companies. Um, and so, and in fact, um, we are paid in... Our, our our compensation encourages us to keep people insured, not just sign them up. Um, so, you know, and I don't want to say disparaging things about anyone that might be misconstrued, but um, if you work with someone to enroll you, you want to make sure you're working with someone who can be there in the middle of the year when the insurance company does something out of character and you got to file an appeal and call them on the carpet, which we did a couple months ago. The insurance company just did something that I felt was unscrupulous and we weren't going to let it fly. And I represented the insured in the appeal. And then, you know, in the documentation, they actually lied in their documentation. And when we put it back together and I won't say something about the insurance company, but it is Molina. I'd like to see them run out of the state of Florida. Um, and, uh, so we went back to the marketplace and we won the appeal and she got the right to be reinstated or to apply somewhere else. Obviously she didn't want to be reinstated there. She wanted to apply somewhere else. And so we, in, uh, enrolled her in a plan, um, whereas the insurance company, you know, would have just, just let her wait till next year to re-enroll. And so, those are, you know, it's it's when the rubber meets the road that you really need some help um, and navigating. And, and the other thing that I'll point out is you always have the right of appeal, okay? Be, be it affordable care, uh, Medicare, you have the right to appeal to the insurance company. And if you're not satisfied, you have the right to appeal directly to the marketplace, appeal directly to Medicare and get it overturned. And like I just said, we do get them overturned when they're wrong. They're wrong. And we're going to call them on the carpet and we're going to make sure that it gets, it gets corrected. Now, if you are not assisted by anyone, good luck. You could you could do the whole thing yourself. You know, there are people who can. Um However, I think uh, if I was a consumer, I'd want to have an advocate who's going to be there all year long, next year and the year after that and the year after that. And you ask, what's in it for me? Um, what's in it for me is that we do we, we differentiate based on quality of service and uh, the referrals. When we do a great job, we don't have to advertise our phone rings because people say, go see these people. And you want to work with somebody that asks a someone whom you respect, who knows somebody who knows somebody, with whom should I work that I can count on, who's respected, honest, and will tell me the good, bad, and the ugly up front so I know what I'm going to be dealing with. That's a little bit of a commercial, but hey. Hey, that's great. Um, a slightly different topic. What's happening with the unwinding? Um, the, any, the, any improvement there? Okay. And when he says unwinding, uh, what he's referring to is that during the pandemic, all of the states were prohibited from dropping anyone from the Medicaid rolls. And for a two-year period, and then starting this past March, 
the states could then begin to reassess. Um, and there were some people who, if, if your income had gone up and you're no longer eligible for Medicaid, or people don't realize you need to watch your mailbox because you will get a notice. Um, and, but I would encourage you to be proactive. There, are, you, you, there is an online account at Florida Access, uh, and I should put it in the, in the chat, but there's Florida Access where you can go online, Medicaid recipient, you can look at your file, you can update your information, you can look and see what correspondence is there, you can look and see if they are looking for anything. Uh, we're not a social services agency, but we have someone on, on our staff who just helps people with navigating that stuff. Now, please don't send me everybody you know who needs help with Medicaid. We don't have the capacity, <laughs> but um, I used to do a lot of that myself. I just don't have time. But fortunately, we have someone who is uh, actually better at it than I am. Um, so uh, again, though, that's an area. And one of the things you see is that it's really irritating is people will get a letter that's saying, um, you have an appointment for November 8th. Well, it's November 9th and I just got the letter. So then they say, well, you didn't respond for your appointment. Well, the letter came after the appointment time. You can see how you can get in that cycle. That's why doing it online can be much more efficient and you can see if there's been any correspondence. Any correspondence that they have sent, if you go to Florida Access, um, and I'm gonna, uh, for, pardon me, but if you go to Florida Access, because I got it bookmarked, I, we, you can, uh, and I'm gonna put it in the, in the chat so that you can access all the information that's out there on you and make sure that you know where they are. If they are claiming that you owe any, any information, if they're claiming that you, know, you need to respond to something, then you can be on top of it as opposed to waiting for the mail to come. And especially if the mail isn't necessarily going to be on time or so um, that can be a frustrating experience for people, especially people who are in need, because with Medicaid, you are talking again, very, very low income. Um, and with low income frequently is matched up with lower means, um, frequently lower literacy. And the last thing these people need is to be wrestling with the state over paperwork when they need to get access to going to the doctor, they need access to their services. And especially in the rural areas, we do a lot of work out in Palatka, rural St. John's County. And it is... Uh, it's 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 disheartening in some ways. I just put in the chat the uh, the link to the Florida Access where one can go on and if you don't have an account, you can create an account. If you are a recipient, you will have a case number. Everything is geared to that case number, and uh, you can much more efficiently see where you are. But back to your question about the unwinding and where they are. Of course, Florida was one of the first states aggressively trying to take people off of the Medicaid rolls. And again, as I said earlier, the sad thing is that the federal government is paying 95 percent of the cost. I mean, if we're pro-life, let's keep people alive and not turn down money that can keep mothers and babies and everybody else healthier. So that's a quagmire. Uh, unfortunately, the least and the disadvantage typically don't have the ability or means to speak up and affect the system, which is why organizations like the Urban League and the NAACP are so important for getting out to make sure that the disenfranchised, the underserved get their fair shake because it's really taxation without representation when it gets down to it. Absolutely. Other questions for Jerry? Well, Jerry, I want to thank you for being on tonight. Uh, give folks back about nine minutes. Um, and I assume um, they can get in touch with you. Um, uh, yes. What's the best way to do that? 
four five seven seven or all the right plans.com we got all the right plans at all the right plans.com coming to you live from the jacksonville urban league great all the right plans all one word yes one string all the right plans long to type in easy to remember and and then it's um dot dot com, com. all the right dot com all right I'm, I'm just putting it in the chat here All right. Well, thank you again. Thank you so much for what you do to the for the community um, and the organizations, the help that you've given us and the help that you give to the NAACP. And we're very grateful for that and want to wish you a, a great rest of your evening and a great weekend. And also, um, as we remember our veterans, uh, to uh, recognize them. Uh, uh, this evening, and uh, hope everybody enjoys uh, getting together uh, with those memories. Um, so with that, we'll sign off and uh, uh, hope to see uh, all of you at our next uh, town hall. Thank you. Thank you.